So let's start talking about that first part of the uh, of the day's agenda. Okay, let's talk about the other products. Anybody know this fine gentleman? This is this is we're going to have a, a, a help people help us introduce these three sections of our product. But anybody? This is my buddy Adam. Yeah. Anybody know the chancellor's favorite quote? Famous quote? Anybody know his famous quote? Oh. Okay, well, I'm not going to lose this test. Laws of what sounds like You better not assume being made. I have that up there, but I can tell you that this is one that I heartily disagree with. Right? Because if you're not talking about sausage made, you're not sure what you're going to eat. So, again, this is up here to emphasize the fact that the budget process is itself a process of making laws. The, uh, the budget process is the process of actually making laws. Okay? The budget is enacted by, in this case, the Common Council. It's a process that starts in the mayor's office and continues, and we'll go into it in some detail. But it's also important to note that this law, this law being made, this budget process, is itself governed by another law. Okay? Our statutes in Chapter 106 of the city's Municipal code. It's actually chapters 125, 149, 200, and 218 of the Florida statutes. In case anybody ever wants to do that, you should have that on the top. <laughs> but again, both local ordinance and Florida state law dictate what this process needs to look like to a broad extent. Let's look at the players, okay? And we sort of work its way up. The department heads in the city and the constitutional officers in the city. Budget office, mayor's budget review committee, mayor, and then the council. And, and it's, you know, the way I like to talk about budget making is it goes through a number of steps. And if you look at the sort of the bottom one there, um, funds and budgets, they come in with budget requests. Okay? They're making the requests of the executive, in this case, the mayor, also the council, on what they want to see in their budgets for their departments. After those requests are made, they come to the, in this case, the mayor's budget office, right, who formulates recommendations, recommendations to the mayor. The mayor, after review by his budget uh, review committee, comes up with a budget proposal, which goes finally to the council, and the council enacts or adopts the budget. We'll talk a little bit more in detail about this, but it's important to, to sort of understand that. Those steps in the process, right? The department's request, set the budget office, recommends, the mayor proposes, the council enacts in this case, or the legislative body enacts or adopts a budget. Okay. It's important to look sort of down at the bottom, not just the department's budget, because there are other things that are going on there as well. Um, because there are two sides of the budget, right? There are requests that come from the department heads, who in many cases um, are, are certainly advocates programs that they administer, and they have these desires and legacy, but those, these desires and the requirements of constitutional officers have to be tempered by the fiscal realities that the city is facing. So the early part of this process also has um, domestic projections being made, right? Long-term parts of the plan, the capital plan, are being put together at the same time. There's a five-year technology plan. So that when this gets from the departments elected to the budget office, they are looking at it from two different sides. They're looking at the cost from the departments, but at the same time, they're trying to make sure that they're not trying to fit 10 pounds of stuff in a 10 pound bag, right? the amount of resources that are going to be available. Now, there are two different approaches that an executive and ultimately a council can take here to that whole budget process, one of which is to say, here are our needs, what do we need to raise the revenue to support it? The other side of the equation, and I'm sure some of going on to some extent, all situations are here's what we're going to have in revenue, how much in terms of services can that support. Right? So, so there's a bit of a, a good deal of long going back and forth over the early parts of the process. But that this is the player that leaves out the most important part, and that is you folks, right? Because ultimately, 
mayor, members of the council are responsive to your needs. And again, this is where hopefully in laying out this process, laying out where there are both formal and informal opportunities for the difficulties in the process, you come into the picture perhaps more than all of us would in the case. Okay. Let's talk about schedule. Before we leave, sorry. Uh, this is a very important part of doing the city operation that comes through the budget. It's the office of the director of uh, finance administration, the chief financial officer. A lot of those things we talked about on the budget office belong in this part of the city government. The budget office itself is accounting. We have this information technology for the five year plan on the treasury pension office. Right? So this part of the city government plays an outside of the role in basically recommending to the mayor, based on input from both sides of that process, what his ultimate proposal might look like to the county council. Okay, now let's look at backwards. And this caveat here, um, some of these dates are set in statute, which are depending on matter they are, some of them are more loose, some of them go to sort of date the issue of budget took place. But this will lay out sort of from the beginning of the process to the end of the process. And the thing to note here is the budget process starts, I'm going to start a couple weeks. This is the fiscal year 18, 19 budget, right? Six months out of a 12 month year, budget formulation is going on. <laughs> Got to start. Yes? October 1. October 1 September 2. September so, yeah, so March through October is uh, at the end of September is when you're really putting together the budget to go from next step. Okay? Um, so March, the mayor will distribute instructions to the park heads and the passengers will also that meet here in Jacksonville to help them with meetings that take place. And the idea that we, in a broader context, we call it a call letter to go back from the mayor's office to the department. And it tries to lay out sort of here are what we think the fiscal realities are going to be going forward. So here's your guidance as to what we want your budget request to look like. And without being specific or particular, that might be given a particularly tight budget year, we want to see you hold the line, or we want to see your budgets come back 3% less than they were last year. Times are good, we might say, you know, you can uh, increase your budgets by X. You might have some guidance around salaries. Um, so it, it, it's, it's really an opportunity for the executive to convey to the department heads and the constitutional officers, here's what we're expecting from you in terms of your budget request. Six months out of 12 months, yep. and you do this every year. Yes. So, are there cities that are streamlined in hospitals that don't do it every year? They do it every six years? They there, do it every year? There are states I know that do biannual budgets. I don't know that, that cities do. Um, six months typical? Yeah, not too much further than that. The budgets that I've been involved with always start, and, and, and yeah, I don't want to suggest that it's it's not somehow well, but there are a lot of considerations that need to do it in a lot of steps in this process, right? And, and, and it's important to note that you know, once the department heads are through with their sort of getting the budget in, there's some interaction that they can want about the business. So the, the process sort of moves from one stage and one group of, of, of people in the government to another. So I'm sure there's some that do it. Shorter. I'm thinking back to my most recent experience, we probably started ours in early May uh, in another county in, in Florida, which I don't get that list, right? Um, with the bank call letter, yeah. you have to the microphone anymore. <laughs> uh, when the call letter goes out, it's a good year, you can increase budgets, or bad year, you can decrease. Do you typically see that as just a flat percentage increase by ours? You know, it, it, this specific department is a priority, so they can just hold the line while these other departments need to cut. I mean, is there some differentiation there typically or no? Often not in, in the, the, the call itself. Usually there will be the zero we want to do. But when it comes to actually considering the budget request of the departments, that's where it can it can play. And, and I don't want to say it's always up down percentage, dollar or not. In some cases, we're going to go out and say, we really want to see you come in and see new programs and projects that you want to encourage. But you say you do that, make sure you identify the savings you're going to take from that. So to answer your question, usually a beginning fall the budget will be sort of uniform across a, a city or a county or state government. But when it gets later on the stage, stages of the budget, then that's where things can, can change for that, depending on 
what the mayor wants to see, what the mayor's got, which gives him to get our initiatives for him. Yeah. Uh, else? Okay. Um, so March is when this, this process kicks off. It's late March, I think, is traditionally the case. April 1 is the deadline. All the deadline departments submit their capital improvement plan request. Right? April 17, this was a this year's um, date. I think it was a deadline for the departmental submissions to come into the, uh, the budget office. It was probably three or four weeks that they had to, to put together their request. Okay, April, June timeframe, the budget office is reviewing budget submissions. And here's where another interesting part of the process comes. The property appraisal, as of June 1, that is a hard measure that law for state law. The property appraisal is a preliminary estimate of tax values. What's that about? Mm -hmm. Well, certainly in the city of Jacksonville and in most of the cities and counties, the largest single source of revenue is the property tax. The preliminary estimates of taxable value allows the people making the budget to sort of understand what they're going to have to work with when it comes to what the ultimate property tax collection is going to look like, right? So it's required to be a real estate process so that that information, at least on a preliminary basis, is delivered to the policymakers uh, so they understand. And taxable values generally, the exception is about negative. Actual increases in the values of new building properties plus new construction, improvements in properties, all raise the taxable value upon which the property tax is based. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Okay. Uh, also, in June, the Mayor's Budget Review Committee reviews the budget. The uh, Mayor's Budget Review Committee is sort of like the one called the Vision Cabinet, which is formally constituted, consists of the Chief Administrative Officer, the Deputy Administrative Officer, um, the Financial officer. They are involved in sort of reviewing what comes up through the process. And also, as I understand it here, they tend to be a uh, mediating uh, force between, surprise, surprise, you know, as someone who's engaged in, in developing budget thinking, I'm not sure this part of that comes out, but I have, but it all gets a little bit contentious between the department heads who, again, obviously want the best for the people that they serve. And the budget office, which often has to say no. So, my understanding of how the MDRC works here is that um, if there needs to be some mediation, the mayor's budget review committee comes in and steps in and sort of makes recommendations to the mayor. The MDRC is also a part of the student ladies' pitch. Uh, this is something I haven't seen in other places that I've been, so it's sort of a new experience for me. It, it makes a lot of sense, uh, especially in terms of the So, yes, ma'am. And this is a different process. There's a lot of discussion as well. Is that I don't think that makes it easy. Thanks for having me. Okay, let's continue on. July 1. Certification of final taxable values of each property. So earlier, a month earlier, you get preliminary estimates. Now there's a certification of final taxable values. Now the mayor knows how much he can expect to collect from property tax. He can plug that figure in. He understands what he's got, both the final and need to deal with the property tax rates in healthy fashion, or the ability to perhaps lower them in the proposal to the council. Yes? Like the outside, you're approved, but do all of the revenues come from uh, property appraisals. How does that process work? <laughs> it's something I can't speak to in, in, in detail. Appraisals, because again, I don't know what the sizes, and I can't tell what do outside. But you know, appraisals take place, not we appraise every, but certainly new property that comes along, the tax rolls is appraised on a regular basis. Uh, and, and I think that's in large measure um, what happens in setting the final taxable values. It's both adding to the existing um, stock of, of properties, but also looking at an overall increase in values of properties, 
Okay, you like the piece, and again, this is the part that's a lot of air presents both the balance budget and the coming year. Council. After that, on July 18th, the council adopts the maximum notice for the trim and village notice for the trim notice. Are you familiar with the trim process for the village? This is the product of a state law. And uh, I'm not sure how long it goes to that. But basically, it is a requirement that every local government announce to advertise to their residents um, the maximum, I think we'll talk about this before the last one, uh, the maximum notice rate for the coming year. And for those of you who may have followed the state, Budget debate over the last couple of years, you may recall that there were some questions. The Speaker of the House saying, I'm not going to allow for property tax to go up to support the increase in aid you want to give to school districts because that would be a property tax increase. And the governor saying, No, 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 that's not a property tax increase. Okay. Because if someone's individual tax bill goes up because their property value raises, that's not a tax increase. No. Uh, the tax increase comes is when the local government increases the tax rate. Well, I tend to agree with the mayor on that. But interestingly enough, by state law, if you are a local government and you advertise when you're talking about what your maximum budget would be, a rate of tax in tax does not change, you are required to advertise that as a tax increase. Okay? True process. Talks about what's called the rollback rate. So if your bill <coughs> rate for this year is 10 mills, mills is a dollar per thousand dollars of value on the property, and because property values increase, if you keep that rate, you would bring more tax revenue in. You have to advertise that as a tax increase. The rollback rate is the rate that you would have to charge if you were to generate the exact same tax levy with the rate that goes for it. And if your proposed rate is higher than the rollback rate, which is usually going to be lower than the current rate because property values increase, you are required to advertise that with property tax rates. Simply because the receipts are larger, yes. we call that a rate? Is that what you're talking well, it, it's revenue, the tax levy is the amount you expect to collect, right? The tax rate, if, if the tax rate stays the same, but it's against a higher value, it generates more revenue. Now, this is by a dictate of the Florida legislature. Yes. And do other states talk like this? <laughs> I can't speak a lot of the states. Well, the only one I know. That. Okay, say that one more time. It's the only one you know of that talks like this. <laughs> yes, and that's not to say that there are other states out there. So basically, we need to have ourselves a get together because we say, does it matter how many people we need? The budget's a billion dollars. I've lived here 27 years. When I called Joe to ask him if he would do this in September of last year, I said, Joe, I finally, it dawned on me. Texas budget's a billion dollars. It's not 500 million, it's not a billion and a half. And honest to God, there are more roads, there are more people, there are more houses. It's still a billion dollars. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that much more specifically as we get into this. But, well, now but, I know why. Well, <laughs> <laughs> this, this does not stop anybody from from keeping the rate the same or raising the rate. All, all it does is say to. But it encourages politicians to roll back the rate because they promise not to raise the tax But it misleads the public. Okay, don't shoot the message. No, I'm checking to be here. I just want to make sure we're getting this. Yeah, I think it's important to get it. You might notice that I said the outset. I tended to agree with the governor in this case that that's not really a tax increase. But what he's saying is opposite of what state law tells you at the local level you have to do. Because state law says if you don't, even if you don't raise the rate, if you ultimately raise more money, in your local government, because that is raised, guess what? That's a tax increase, and you have to have it out of the special. Let's look for your true losses next year. 
Somebody seems to there about I probably shouldn't have asked Mr. Chill that question before I said that. Okay, I don't want to get too far ahead on that thing. It's sort of can't get away from August, September, the Council Finance Committee holds hearings on both budget and bill of trade. Okay, in August, the Council Finance Committee. Folks, pay attention then. This is your formal opportunity to come to hearings. I suggest there are other times you should be talking to the city for all of this process. But uh, we'll do the early hearings on budget. September 12th is the issue number again. Budget as amended by the Council is filed and available for public inspection for not less than seven days. Again, of this year, 8th, September 26th, we have a public hearing on the budget, all related plans, the five year capital plan, the five year technology investment plan, resolution and ordinances are adopted. And guess what? You got a budget in place for the coming year. And the fiscal year begins on October 1st. Now, it is important to note here, too, that we've talked about the budget process leading up to the budget. In pretty much any given Year, fiscal year, you're really dealing with three years' budgets, right? You're implementing the budget for the year that you're in, right? You're working on that. You're preparing the budget for the following year, right? As in March of this year, you're going to start for preparing for next year. And also, at the beginning of the fiscal year, you're closing out. This is the city controller will be doing production of the annual financial report, looking back, closing out the previous budget. So, really, you've got in any given fiscal year, you're really dealing with three fiscal years, and this is regarding the reason that we talk about the principles that are introduced each year we talk about the budget. But again, it's important to sort of understand that this budget process you're really dealing in any given year with three fiscal years. Important to note that the reason that the adoption of the final budget is delayed is delayed beyond the start of fiscal year, so you can spend money on this percent. Okay, copies of the completed ordinances adopting the final villages before the state. Review these property appraisal and tax collection within three days of the adoption of the budget ordinances. Now, again, talk about the fact that you're, once you did budget cast, you've got to implement the budget. And again, I go back to the fact that these budgets are a series of estimates. So, during the course of the year, in many cases, you can find that you can revise the budget. Because the budget director here was as good as other budget directors get right all the time, except for now and there, um, and can require revision. Okay? So, responsibility for those revisions, depending on the magnitude of them, rests either with the mayor or with the council. I'm not going to spend too much time on here, but if not, that's soon. A TD is a transfer directive, a BT is a budget transfer that requires council approval, an RC is a reclassification of positions. Right. This is kind of important. The revision requirement of council approval. Appropriation of new revenues, new grant comes in over the course of the year, and it's over $100,000. Council needs to get involved and approve that. Transfer is formal between public service grants, previously approved by the council. And I suspect council is correct me if I'm wrong that when the council is made at the grant, they have some, some sense of ownership there and cause some any changes that come from that. Transfers to or from council activities specifically. Uh, transfers is greater than $500,000. Transfers are followed to transfer any agency functions and capital improvement project transfers of greater than 10% and greater than 20%. Okay. Project in most detail. Some revisions in the course of the year can be done by the mayor administratively. Some of them have to go to the council for approval. Okay. Transfers to Hi. Hi. The $100,000 limits to have to approve city council, is that, how does that limit compare to other cities? I, I can't, that's for new, new revenues coming in. And, and I can tell you that the, the, the sort of the idea is, at least from other places that I've been, which is that when a new large grant comes in, the legislative body must understand what is committing us to in the future. Small grant, probably not a big deal, but if it's a large grant, they want to understand sort of the implications of that going forward or any revenue that's proposed. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm just thinking of the 
Maybe you could just flag that and see if it's possible to the city. Because those of us who are in the private grant making world, it, you know, Jacksonville doesn't get a share of large private foundation and grants from outside. That's well, that could be a negative for an outside funder if that process bogs down in any way. So I, I think Michelle's point, it seems kind of low right. relative to the size of the budget. So I would just flag it if you could. I'm trying to be back to the question that's a challenge of the neighborhood. I think it's any new grant that came in, but I will make it a point to check that. And this means you have to come back to the next session, right? <laughs> 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 How did you uh, determine the amount of revenue received from the state and federal government to incorporate in this budget? We'll talk about that a little bit more. Get to the other sources. 